There's a very simple method for driving narcissists mad and also getting your life back on track at the same time. We know that narcissists have a negative impact on many aspects of our life. Typically, they will be impacting our sleep, our food consumptions, our social life, our work-life balance, our hobbies, and far more. As long as they are impacting our life, they are damaging our life. Now, the first thing we need to do to have a healthy life is protect the important parts of our life, get that back on track. But how can we do this as long as they are manipulating us and harming us and hurting us? These are the simple three steps. First of all, identify the different aspects of your life that you want to protect. Secondly, for each of these aspects, identify which specific behavior the narcissist undertakes that harms that part. For instance, if you're with someone who claims to suffer from insomnia and uses this to keep you awake when you need to sleep so that in the morning you are tired, but they sleep in whilst you go to work. And I've been there before myself. And I can guarantee you that months on end of bad sleep caused by someone who claims to have insomnia, but simply sleeps in in the morning because she's tired, because she didn't sleep. And then in the evening, she's not tired. So she doesn't want to sleep and she doesn't want to let you sleep. I guarantee you this can impact your physical health and your mental health. So in this case, keeping you awake is what impacts the sleep. When it comes, for instance, to food, someone who likes junk food and buys junk food, that will be causing you to be eating the junk food. For each of these behaviors, identify what they do and find a reason why it has to stop. If you need to, go and see a doctor. Go and tell the doctor that you need help, that you have this problem, be it with sleep or food or alcohol or a lack of activities, a lack of hobbies, and come back with a rational reason. And then you have the conversation with them. And the conversation goes like this. Sleep is important for me and I have not been sleeping enough. When we sleep in the same bed, you keep me awake. Therefore, in order for me to sleep, we can't sleep in the same bed. When you do this, of course, they will turn around and say, well, where am I supposed to sleep? And you make one suggestion, one suggestion only. For instance, sleep on the sofa. And if they don't like the suggestion, you can ask, well, what do you suggest? Make sure that their main suggestion, the one where they disrupt you, is off limits. If they say, well, we can sleep in the same bed. No, we can't because when we sleep in the same bed, you prevent me from sleeping. They might promise they'll make an effort. Okay, then you say, let's see. If one time you disrupt my sleep, then we stop. We need to find another solution because there will always be another time. When it comes, for instance, to exercise, you need to be able to exercise and they don't want you to do this. If you exercise, your body gets healthy, clears your mind, it's better for your health. So you simply say, I need to exercise. When you take up so much of my time, I cannot exercise. Therefore, I will schedule in the exercise and that's that. And if they want your attention, that's fine. But first you need to exercise and then you deal with the rest. When it comes to behaviors, they often like using substances, alcohol or other substances. And here you can simply say, when these substances are around me, this is the impact it has on my life. I can't live with this impact on my life. Therefore, either you need to stop using the substances or you go away from me when you use them. You have to be firm with this. When you do this, it has a bad impact. I can't live with the bad impact. Therefore, something has to change. You can always start by saying, I'm sorry. Introduce it by, I'm sorry, this is a fact. I'm not sleeping well, I'm tired. I don't exercise enough. I need to quit drinking. I need to change the behaviors. They won't want to change the behaviors because it works for them. And if you change your behaviors, they will lose the power they have over you. So simply say, I have to do this. The doctor said so. I know I have to do it. I need to focus more on work. That's always a good one. I need to focus more on work. I need to focus more on work. Therefore, I need to make these changes. Suggest changes that they won't want to concede and explain these changes as simply being your behavior is creating a problem and that problem does not work for me. 
by using absolute logic and rationality and imposing a solution which fundamentally is a healthy and respectful one. You're talking about more sleep, you're talking about a healthier lifestyle, something that someone who loved you or respected you would wish for you and they would support you. If someone says, I need to stop drinking because I'm drinking too much, it's affecting me, someone who loves you would support you. Someone who doesn't love you would get angry because their drinking is more important. So you identify them. This drives them mad because the logic is absolutely flawless. Of course I need to sleep. Of course we need eight hours sleep, preferably nine hours sleep. You can even look at the strategies you use to try to offset the problem of a lack of sleep, such as drinking coffee. Just quit coffee. Quit coffee, quit sugar. Go ultra healthy in your lifestyle. I gotta warn you, ultra healthy is boring, but ultra healthy helps us live better, age better, feel better, and especially they don't like boring. Cut out all of the things they like and just say, this is my lifestyle from now on. That makes you significantly less attractive, but also it helps push them away. And remember, this has a massive advantage. If they want to leave, they are less likely to try hoovering around you. They are less likely to try to come back into your life and to stalk you. Try to bore them away. It's basically a form of greystone, but you focus on the behaviors. If you do this, you bore them, you protect your boundaries, and gradually you reestablish a healthy lifestyle. Other points to consider, for instance, meditation. You say that you need 30 minutes of peace and quiet without them around. I remember trying this and the other person could not help herself but barge into the room and make noise because she was in a hurry and I started late and she was so angry. It was tragically hilarious to observe because I had no idea about toxicity back then. I just saw that I wanted 20 minutes of peace and quiet amidst all the drama, and I couldn't even get 20 minutes of peace and quiet. By establishing healthy behaviors, you will see the unhealthy reaction. And if there's an unhealthy reaction, it's sort of like your ecosystem is beginning to expulse the toxic elements because you're willing to clean them. Another case in point, be careful with the way you spend money. Say you have to stop spending money. You have to stop shopping, stop going to restaurants, stop drinking, stop the behaviors which are costing you so much. Remember, this is really important. In order for you to have some form of financial freedom, you need about one year of income in savings. If you're earning $40,000 a year, you need $40,000 in savings. If it's 100,000, it's 100,000. It's difficult to do, and this is an interesting goal to have. If you have that, you have financial freedom. That's one of the reasons why having your personal bank account is so important and not mixing finances with the other person, regardless of how healthy or unhealthy they are. If you have this financial freedom, you have so much more freedom. But especially if you cut off the shopping and the restaurants and the cinema and the bars and the drinking and all of those expenses, you become significantly more boring and they can't tap into your finances. This also isolates them in their vices and that's exactly what you want to do. You want to use logic that they can't resist so they get isolated and they walk away out of boredom. This helps you get your life back under control, and also drive them mad.